In part one of the Zero to Hero course, you discovered the secret to creating consistent and natural looking lighting and the importance of where you place your light in relation to your subject. You also learned how adding diffusion can completely transform even the cheapest light modifier and create natural looking lighting with subtle transitions from highlight to shadow. But after doing the exercises in part one, you might have noticed that this particular style of lighting has a couple of limitations. Firstly, the light's always in the frame. And secondly, this particular style of lighting is not that flattering on all skin types. Let me show you what I mean. When I first started photographing portraits, I had no idea there were classic lighting styles. I barely noticed what the light was doing. And all I really cared about is getting the correct exposure, plus or minus a couple of stops, getting the image sharp, and, you know, not dropping the camera. Knowing how to manipulate light in relation to your model is a game changer. These rules apply to all light. If you understand light, you can achieve any lighting style. Now, using the classic portrait lighting styles, it's not an essential skill. And there are some photographers who just light intuitively, and that's okay. But just like knowing your color theory or composition rules, it's a great idea to be aware of them. The biggest takeaway I want you to get from this part of the Zero to Hero course is the fact that there is no one size fits all when it comes to lighting. There are numerous classic lighting styles and the style that you choose should depend on what you want to achieve as a final result. Now, there are some people that you want to photograph and you want to capture their character. So there's going to be more contrast in that image. You want to create mood, shadows and highlights and more contrast. Or you might want to create a more flattering image where you're not showing off detail in the skin tone. You want to create something that looks a lot softer, more beautiful, and there is a lighting style for that. So in this part, I'm going to share three different lighting styles that you can successfully add to your repertoire of lighting styles. And as when you are setting up a shot, you're thinking about it, you are pre-visualizing that shot. I want you to start thinking in this way when you are lighting a headshot or lighting a portrait. What is the best way to light this portrait to achieve the result that I want to achieve? Now, those of you who have already completed Zero to Hero Part 1, you will know that it is crucial that you understand how to move the focus points in camera. You'll also need a either a speed light or studio light and some form of remote trigger or quarter trigger so you can take your flash off camera. And if you haven't already watched uh, Zero to Hero Part 1, I strongly encourage you to watch that because that will lay out everything that you need in a lot more detail. The other thing that I'm going to be using for this series of tutorials is an umbrella, a shoot-through umbrella, and you will also need a boom stand because we're going to be uh, mounting the light on a boom and also a DSLR or mirrorless camera. You'll also need a five-in-one reflector and the trusty styrofoam head.
Rembrandt is a lighting style that was named after the 15th century Dutch painter called Rembrandt. Now, the way that Rembrandt would set up his light is he would position the model in relation to the light at a certain angle that would create a little triangle spot of light under the eye in the shadow side of the face. And so to achieve this look using uh, a single light, all you need to do is position your light at a 45 degree angle to your model. So we're keeping everything the same. We've got our model a minimum of uh, five feet or one and a half meters from the wall. We've got a minimum focal length of 70 millimeters. We're going to be shooting at a low angle. So you wanna position your light so that it's at a 45 degree angle to your model. And again, you can play with the uh, proximity to your model. If you bring the light a lot closer, you're going to have more rapid fall off. So the, diff the contrast will be greater between the highlight to the shadow side. So it's just a ma matter of playing around. So you've got your 45 degree angle and you want your light raised slightly above your model. So let's have a look at how that looks now. So you can see I've got my light on the stand with the shoot through umbrella and it's, it's raised a fair way above uh, my model's head there. And it's at a 45 degree angle. My ISO is 100, my f-stop is f8 and I'm shooting at 1 200th of a second. Okay, so here it is there, and you can see the little triangle of light. Very simple, this is done using an umbrella. Now, you might get something that looks like the image on the screen where you see that the triangle under the eye isn't quite there, and this is because I think I've lit it slightly too flat on. So the angle isn't quite right. So it's just a matter of tweaking that angle. You wanna try and get that 45 degree angle and the height right with your light. So it might be a, a matter of tweaking. And then finally, you should be able to get that uh, image here where you see that little triangle under the eye. One thing I want you to notice when you look at this image it's lit from the side. And whilst this does give you great character lighting, we've got beautiful shadowing, lovely fall off. So we've got the highlight camera right, and then the shadow and the fall off camera left. Lighting from the side can be problematic. So you can see that in my model, he has uh, some some scars on his face and some pock marks and things like that. Now, when you're lighting from the side, it actually enhances any imperfections in the skin. Okay, so you can see here I've got a detail, a close up of textured skin. And so you can see that it's like, it kind of looks like the detail of a landscape. So we've got like, you know, uh, raised areas and then there we've got craters. And so depending on the person that you're photographing, the texture of the skin is going to vary. So what you want to think about is what is the final result that you want to achieve. Are you looking to achieve a character portrait where you wanna enhance all these, the texture of the skin really show it off? Or are you trying to create a portrait that flatters the person and that you want to diminish the look of the texture? Lighting is going to have a huge impact on how your final image looks. So on the screen now you can see that what I've done is I've photographed a close-up, I've filmed a close-up of a textured wall and what I've done is I've got a light that is going uh, from camera left to camera right so it's side lighting and you can see that what happens is where there's a bump 
you can also see that opposite that, where the light hits the bump, it blocks the light and we get a shadow on the other side. So basically what you're doing when you're lighting, using side lighting on someone who has uh, coarse or textured skin, you're going to enhance every single um, pore and lump and bump on the skin. You're increasing the texture. Now have a look what happens when I light directly flat on. You can see that it, it makes a huge difference to the contrast of this image or how much texture is obvious. Lighting your portraits from the front gives you a far more flattering look to the skin tone. Lighting from the side is going to emphasize the texture of the skin and any imperfections that you see. So those of you who did part one of the Zero to Hero course would have noticed a couple of limitations by the lighting style. Having the light very close to the subject meant that the light and the light stand is constantly in the frame. The other disadvantage that we just discussed was lighting from the side can enhance the texture of the skin so it's not always that flattering. The workaround is to get your light up on a boom above the model. So basically you've got a light uh, lighting the model from the front and then you might have a reflector or another light underneath. So this lighting style, I call it beauty, beauty lighting. It's also known as paramount lighting, Hollywood lighting, clamshell lighting, or butterfly lighting. All the same style of lighting where you use a boom to bring your light above the model's head and then you're positioning the light so that it is forcing light front on and this eliminates a lot of the detail and the texture in the skin because you're lighting flat on. There is nowhere for shadows to hide. This is the most flattering style of lighting that I use. It saves a ton of time in post-production. You can basically use, almost use the files straight out of camera. It's that good. And I highly recommend it for when you're shooting corporate headshots, portraits, where you want to flatter your model. Now, I love using the Manfrotto 420B. It's a medium size boom. There's all sorts of different brands that you can get. Uh, you just want to make sure that it is easy to, to put together and it's not too heavy. You can carry it around on your own. And a couple of things that you want to be sure of is you want to make sure that it is well weighted down when you're using it on location because a gust of wind can easily uh, knock it over. So basically it's like having your own assistant and uh, I even use the boom with an assistant so that the, when we're not shooting, we can easily just uh, place the light down, especially um, at the beach and things like that where you don't want to get sand in your light. So even in a studio, I've got my two fill lights and then I've got my boom with my main light and you can see there that I've got a nice big weight there on the boom and a counterweight at the back to keep it in place. So this is the best way to get a light up above the model and uh, perfect for shooting headshots and flat, even lighting. All right, so to shoot with this beauty lighting style or paramount lighting or butterfly lighting, you need to mount your light onto the boom. Don't forget to use a, uh, a weight to counterweight the boom so that it stays in place, doesn't topple over. So I've got my shoot through umbrella up above, boomed in and above. Now, here's a view from the camera. Now, if I zoom out to a wider angle, you can see both the light 
and the reflector in the frame. The camera settings for this are crucial because this setup, if you shoot it correctly, you won't even get the light in the frame and you won't see the reflector. So what I recommend is the following setup. All right, so when we were working on a stand, we had the light at 45 degrees. Now that we've got the boom, it means that we can boom that light in directly above the model's head and directly in front. So that light is going to be flat on. So remember in that earlier example where I showed you the difference between lighting from the side and lighting from the front. So this setup enables us to light flat on to the face. And what you need to make sure is that you're shooting at a minimum focal length of 70 millimeters, that your camera height is below eye level and that you have your model away from the back wall. All right, so you can see that at a wider angle, I'm getting the light and the reflector. But when I zoom in long and I scooch my camera height down a little bit, you can see that uh, I'm not getting the light in anymore and I've got a good frame for a headshot. No light in the frame, no reflector in the frame. So the camera settings for this are exactly the same as all the exercises you did in Zero to Hero Part 1. ISO 100, F8, 1 200th of a second. So what you, what you need to do is stop down and take a test shot and depending on how light or bright the location you're in is, what you want to see is a blank frame like this. So in the room where I am, lots of window light, bright daylight, I'm getting F8, 1 200th of a second, ISO 100. So the idea is to eliminate all ambient light. So that's our starting point. Now we can bring in the light. Okay, so here is a wide view from the angle of the camera. So you can see that this large umbrella above lighting my model. So I want to show you a side view of that. And of course, I'm going to zoom in and fill the frame with my model. So if I do this correctly and shoot from a lower angle, I'm not going to see the umbrella at all. So here's a side view of the setup. So I've got my model. You'll either have a wall behind your model or you'll place uh, some roll paper and create a set. But I've got my model sitting, leaning forward, head forward, chin down. And then I can bring my light modifier in. So I've got my light mounted on the boom stand. And so today we're working with umbrellas because that is the best light modifier when you're just learning to see light. And then there is, uh, after you're comfortable with the umbrella, you can certainly move on to an Octobox or a beauty dish. But for this exercise, I recommend that you stick with the umbrella. So what you'll notice is slight tweaks in the angle of the, the light modifier are going to make a big difference to how your light looks. Now, you've heard me say a lot uh, today about lighting flat on. What do I mean by this? And you saw in the exercise when I side lit that textured wall, you could see that uh, I was giving that, that wall extra contrast and you could see every lump and bump. But when I lit front on, flat on, it diminished a lot of the texture. So this is uh, showing you how to do that. But in this case, we're now lighting a face. So 
what do I mean by flat on? So I, I often see a lot of people using this uh, beauty paramount butterfly lighting style and they will place the light above and direct it down like that. This is going to cause a lot more issues. So you're going to have, because you've got the light going down and, and um, it's, it's directional and on an angle, which means you're going to have similar issues to what I showed you with that example with the wall. Because if there's any lumps and bumps, what you'll find is the light will light above and then underneath you're going to get shadows. So what I prefer, and this is what I mean by lighting flat on, is directing the light so that it is hitting your model flat on, okay? And then using this technique, there is nowhere for shadows to form. It's flat directional lighting. It's actually mimicking garage light. So it's a flat directional light, nowhere for shadows to form. So the next thing that you need to be aware of is positioning your camera. So once I've got my light in position and I might just like raise the height of that, I've then got to get my camera in, in into a place where I can actually see the model's face. Now, this is why it's super important that you shoot with a longer focal length. Now, this particular lighting style doesn't really work with a wider lens unless you bring the camera in front of your light modifier. So something like that, and it can work, but I recommend that you work with a longer focal length, say 70 or millimeters or longer, because the reason for this is when you're shooting on a longer lens, you'll get a narrower field of view. At the longer the focal length, the, narrow the narrower the field of view, and you're able to maneuver in these uh, narrower spaces. So all it is is a matter of setting up your camera lowering the camera angle, okay, and then tilting the camera up slightly. Now what you might find when you're shooting is you may just clip the tip of the light modifier in the top of the frame. And so you'll see when you start shooting this that having a large umbrella, it's still going to get in the way a little bit and that's why uh, you're going to probably prefer to move to an Octobox or a beauty dish next, but just for, for getting a feel for this style of lighting, I recommend that you stick with the umbrella, even if you can just see a little bit of it in the top of the frame. So it's just a matter of positioning your light to get that nice, flat, even lighting that's hitting your model's face, and then maneuvering your camera and shooting at a, a lower angle is going to allow you to shoot up and under the light. So it's not really going to be in the way if you manage to uh, maneuver the, the camera angle in the right way and you've got a long enough focal length, all right? And then the next thing you can do is once you've shot like that is you can also bring in a reflector. And then what you'll find is you'll need to maneuver the reflector around and then what you'll end up with, and this is where this lighting style gets its uh, nickname, clamshell, like you've got the reflector is at the opposite angle to the light modifier and then we've got this little space in between the two where you can angle your lens so you should be able to shoot through that small space, smaller angle of view, so long focal length, and you're able to capture the headshot or a three-quarter shot without actually getting these lights in the frame. Okay, so here's the wide shot with the light set up, just single light, and then as I zoom in, there's the final image. So it's 1 200th of a second ISO 100 F8. What I want you to notice is the beautiful fall off. So you've got the light on the cheek and then it rapidly falls off. It actually, this style of lighting really sculpts the face and makes it look 
three-dimensional so it gives people cheekbones strong jaw lines and I love the natural transition from the highlight on the cheek that goes to the shadow along the uh, side of the cheek there and under the jawline. Now you can also uh, tweak this lighting and what I like to do on some occasions, uh, particularly if I want a flatter, more even lighting, is I will add a reflector. Now, choosing between the white and the silver will depend on how much fill light I want to bounce back into my model. So sometimes I'll have the white reflector down low, lower, so further away from the chin and you'll get a, a, a subtle fill light or you can raise that the fill light or the reflector and bring it closer to the chin and you're going to get a, a, a slightly different look there. So it's just a matter of playing around with the height of that reflector and also play around with the white, the silver, or you might want to try black as a cutter to uh, eliminate any fill under the chin at all. So it's worth playing with. So you can see that there is a big difference between the straight shot, uh, just a single light, and adding fill. In this instance, I've added a silver reflector, so you can see uh, the difference there with the shot camera left, no fill, and camera right with fill. Now, once you've mastered the beauty paramount clamshell lighting technique that I've just shown you, there is a slight variation, and this variation on the beauty lighting is called loop lighting. So it's basically the same setup as beauty lighting, but instead of having the light directly in front of your subject, it's slightly off to the side. So it gets the name loop lighting from the little loop of, of uh, light you see under the nose. So the little loop uh, of a shadow. I use this style of lighting a lot, particularly when I'm shooting on location because it sculpts the face and I think it replicates the look of natural light a lot better. So we can test this style of lighting out. So for the loop style of lighting, the setup is virtually the same as the beauty lighting or paramount lighting setup. So we have minimum focal length, again, 70 millimeters. We're shooting at a camera height of below, slightly below eye level. And for this exercise, you're going to keep your model a minimum of 1.5 meters or five feet from the background. Now, with the beauty lighting setup, we have the light positioned directly in front and slightly above the model's face. Now, you might get a little bit of the light coming into the frame, and what we're achieving is a beautiful, flat, even lighting across the entire face. Now, the slight twist with loop lighting is we're going to take our light source and move it off to the side and just adjust the angle slightly. So this is how you're going to achieve that lighting so you get that beautiful transition and a, more, a little bit more contrast in the lighting style. So if you have a look at the beauty lighting, you can see that we've got the center of the face is beautifully lit, and then you see the fall off from the sides of the face. You get that beautiful sh shadow, and that's what sculpts the face and gives it the detail. With the loop style of lighting, we're going to slightly move the light off center so that you've got that highlight starts at the side of the face and then goes from highlight to shadow. So here's the setup with the styrofoam head. So remember the settings are the same. 1 200th of a second, ISO 100, F8. 
eight is the aperture and you can see already the advantages of this style of lighting because you have the light off to the side so this is why it's my preferred lighting style for outdoor portraits if i'm working with headshots I, and it's a tight headshot and i just want that flat flattering lighting i'm going to go with the beauty style of lighting and if i just want to add a little bit of fall off this style of lighting still gives me that front on lighting nice and flattering nowhere for uh, shadows to form it doesn't enhance the contrast on the face so you're not getting a lot more detail like like you would with side lighting but you are getting that beautiful sculpt that shadow off to the side and the lovely transition from highlight to shadow so you'll keep all the camera settings the same and your lighting settings should be the same as well you may need to just brighten your flash a little bit if you want to even out the lighting then you can bring in a silver or white reflector uh, just put it opposite the light and that will fill in or open up those shadows so let's have a look at a detail here see how now we've evened out the shadow and so you can really manipulate that by how close or how far that reflector is from your model so if you want a heavier shadow you can bring in a black cutter and that's going to minimize the light that's hitting that side of the face and then you'll have a heavier shadow so you'll have a more contrast so the, the transition from highlight to shadow is going to be a lot darker so there are three more lighting styles that you can add to your repertoire very easy uh, the lighting styles the last two lighting styles beauty and loop are very flattering so if you're looking at, at, at you have a client who wants to be flattered in the portrait you want to have beautiful skin tone you want to minimize the details then I would go for beauty lighting if you wanted to use uh, show off a bit of um, shape to the side of the face then I would introduce a uh, loop so just offset the light a little bit and have loop if you wanted something a little bit more dramatic and you don't mind about extra contrast and it's more of a character shot then I would recommend Rembrandt lighting after finishing part one and part two of the zero to hero course you should have a better understanding and feel more confident recreating lighting indoors in part three of zero to hero i'm going to combine all the techniques that we've learned and i'm going to show you how to work with available light so we're going to be manipulating the ambient light the daylight and adding flash to that so that you can recreate similar images to the ones that you see on the screen